Hi, well, this is Farrell. Welcome to the video. It's a special edition a Sugar and Spike Commission. Um, here's the little thumbnail I did for this. Uh, someone com commissioned me a while back to do a like an imaginary cover of Sugar and Spike. They, they never did an issue 100, so he's having all these different artists do their takes on their renditions or, you know, imagine imagining what it would be like, you know. <laughs> so basically, I did this uh, thumbnail. Um, I did a super rough little one, and then kind of a less rough one, and then a bigger one. And then I, uh, you can see here, I made a, a Xerox where uh, he sent me a template of like the, you know, the way the lettering and stuff looks. And I, uh, I, I scanned in the thumbnail that I did, and took it to a copy shop and blew it up, and put it. Uh, the blow up the 11 by 17 you can't see here but it's behind this piece of plexiglass and I taped on this really heavy weight illustration board on top of it and it was a little hard to get the light board to shine all the way through the copy and the plexiglass and the paper the really thick paper normally it's a little I, I use like thinner like watercolor paper Still like a heavyweight paper, but this is like really thick. You can see there from the tape too. You can how thick it is. It's like, uh, yeah, it's a lot, lot different than I'm used to here. I, the idea was, I guess, because this was like a special commission, and it's a little bigger than I'm used to working. This is like eleven by seventeen. You can see my cat hanging out on the table there. Um, it was. Uh, I decided like, oh, I'm gonna try something different and use this like really nice, you know, thicker watercolor paper. Um, and it was a little problematic. Um, you can see there too that I have uh, some copies of, you know, some printouts of some cityscapes. So the my idea was to have this uh, sort of like baby's day out idea that these these kids, these sugar and spike kids, they get into adventures sometimes with their friend Bernie the Brain. And I was just trying to come up with different ideas, like what, what, uh, how, what would I do? And I, I draw like cityscapes and stuff a lot, or I used to in my comic Pop Gun War. So uh, one of the, uh, I guess, stipulations or suggestions of doing this was that I could include my own characters or other comic book characters in it. So I decided to put them in sort of like this, you know, the world that I created of like Pop Gun War, you know, because I have like a Sinclair off to the right, uh, my character Sinclair, this little kid with wings, and then like this sort of airship balloon thing on the left, and I put in some rats and pigeons and crows and stuff around there too, but the main main focus is this, these Sugar and Spike kids and this like robot thing that Bernie the Brain invented, and they're like climbing on top of buildings and stuff. Uh, so the penciling part, that probably took me the longest. Um, I got this assignment uh, some months ago. I, you know, I think it was like at the end of last year. And uh, there you can see the first round of inks that I did. Uh, I didn't take video of the inks, but I inked all this with a brush, the uh, Raphael 8404. Number two, um, I used to use number four a lot, but I switched to number two. Uh, and it took me a while to ink it, but the penciling part took me the longest just to get every, the composition right, kind of make everything fit, to try to make these the sketch, uh, especially like the, the boy's face, Spike, to get it, make it look like how it was in the uh, thumbnail, because I really liked the way the thumbnail looked, like the character of the face, like something about it. But um, So I did a few passes on inking. I First I inked the characters and the robot thing, and you know I just straight black with all that. Uh, line work and everything and then I did the cityscape and the background stuff I did in washes you know I did some line work you know I did the windows I tried to make those all black or mostly black um, and then uh, it was just kind of a matter of like going from like the sort of towards the base of the buildings keeping those like going a lot darker darker wash and then as I worked up to the top I kind of made them a little lighter so here you can see I'm, I started watercoloring and uh, I'm using like a bigger brush here, but I kind of messed up in that I, I decided to use a round brush and I should have just started with a flat brush, like a, um, yeah, like a square brush, which I ended up using a little later because uh, as I was trying to do washes or layers of this, I kept 
it was really hard for me to get the right consistency with the, the liquid watercolor that I was using. And this is the same liquid watercolors that I've been using lately for Robot Todd, for most of the Robot Todd pages, the, the blues in those. It's the same kind of blue. And all my materials are listed in the description if you want to go to the description and check check that out. Um, yeah, so that that was one of the most, as far as the the painting process goes, like the penciling and the inking, that's fine. It just, you know, it took me a little while, but it, it, it just, I, you know, it wasn't like uh, frustrating or anything, but this part, which took me probably less time, got really frustrating. You can kind of see sort of the inconsistent nature of the sky, which I, I guess wouldn't bother some people, but I was really wanting that to, to kind of be as flat as possible, you know, just like a flat blue sky. I didn't want like any clouds or anything in it. I probably should have put some clouds and it probably would have made it easier <laughs> uh, instead of trying to make it look, you know, as like, you know, clean and smooth as possible, like a, a blue sky would. But what I ended up doing is I used those flat brushes right there and I went over it afterwards. It was like a little wet and tried to add a little paint and then use the, the air dryer there that you just saw that, the, you know, the, the blow dryer and what would kind of swipe across to sort of even it all out and I tried to just do that back and forth and back and forth and I just uh uh and that ended up working out okay like it got a little darker than I probably wanted it to but um overall I'm pretty happy with the with the way that you know uh resolved itself <laughs> or that I resolved it uh and then it was just a matter of going in and painting the characters which look with my smaller brush and it's the same brush I used to ink with Raphael 8404 is the brush. I start with their faces usually. I think with this one I started with uh, Bernie's purple suit just because I was trying to keep it in my, my brain. I, I looked at the, some reference photos I had of Sugar and Spike. I was like, okay, he's got red hair. She's got yellow hair or blonde hair <laughs> rather, um, which is basically yellow. Uh, and, you know, he had a purple suit and... Uh, Spike had the coveralls, the blue coveralls, and so, yeah, there's the next uh, watercolor pass on it. Looks like I didn't film that little bit, but, um, and it just, I scanned it, and there's the finish. And on this, uh, you can see once it pans down to the bottom, too, that I added a, a dropped shadow for the, the arm. I, I noticed that when I was about to scan it that I didn't have that added in there, and it was something I was thinking about at the start, that I wanted to have that in there, so... There you go. And I, yeah, I left the, uh, the lettering and, uh, all that stuff. I left that just the white of the paper, including like the, a lot of the smoke on the sides that little sort of like steam or smoke, whatever that is rising from the area. You can see too, I, I put, I mentioned, I put Sinclair, my character in there too, kid with wings, but yeah, that, like that lettering there and even her collar and stuff, that's just the white of the paper showing through. Um, yeah, I even got the little idea there to do the, the drop shadow on her ponytail. I think on the, all the title treatments, uh, her ponytail's cut off, you know, by the price tag. And I was like, well, I, I feel weird cutting off her ponytail, put the price tag on top of that. So, uh, I, I just, I wanted to do something kind of, yeah, weird with that. So I, I had her ponytail kind of between the 12 and the, and the, the background there. So, yeah put a little bit of a shadow in there it's a little, little weird little detail but uh yeah it was it was pretty pretty fun assignment overall except for doing that sky that sky blue <laughs> uh yeah and this is another thing i wanted to tell you guys about again um i mentioned this before but monster us it's a 64 page book that so friends and i put together we each did 31 illustrations and uh, we collaborated on the cover where she did the left half and i did the right half and it's our take on different monsters you know like we each did a gremlin we each did a uh a, a troll we each did a frankenstein we each did a dracula whatever <laughs> vampire um and there's the book we got back from the uh the proof from the printer and we're putting it out for this show permanent damage it's in portland august 26 there's over 50 artists there and this is where we're going to be debuting the book at and you can order the book, we'll send it to you, or you can pick it up at the show or at Floating World at uh, that link there. The link will be in the description too. Also, I have a Patreon if you want to check that out, $2 a month, and uh, sell originals through the Beguiling. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.